Hello and welcome to MTM Vegas. Henderson's getting a new casino. A popular hotel on the Strip is closing temporarily. A very popular Thai restaurant here in town is finally reopening. Santa won't be scuba diving this year and much more. Stick around. Let's hit it. All right, welcome to the show. I'm Sean Coomer, the founder of Miles to Memories, joined by my managing editor, Mark Osterman. And we have a ton of news to discuss this week, so let's get right into it. Mark, you see the news that Henderson may be getting a new casino on St. Rose Parkway just across from the M Resort. Are you excited about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, Vegas, one thing it needs is another casino, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's course, technically right now Henderson, especially. but yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a little surprised. I've never been to the M. I know that you love it. Uh, it's it's kind of like, from what I've gathered from your explanation, it's it's like a Vegas strip casino, but a, for people that don't want to be on the strip, like a Red Rock, something like that. Beautiful. Used to have a great buffet um, that you could go check out and, and kind of enjoy everything that Vegas has to offer without being around the swarms of people. So I know that you, you're thinking maybe they want to make it like a mini Henderson strip down there. Um, which would be cool if that's what they're shooting for. But a nine acre plot of land doesn't seem like it's going to be a massive thing. Maybe they'll see how it works and, and kind of expand from there. I'm not sure. What do you think about it? Yeah, I first saw this from Las Vegas locally on Twitter, just to give um, them credit. It's a nine acre parcel, as you say, sold by the city of Henderson to the Marnell family. And the Marnell family are the ones who actually built the M Resort and then sold it to Penn National Gaming. So it's kind of interesting that they are going to now build something to compete with uh, M Resort. But as you say, it's kind of interesting because this could be the start of a mini kind of strip along St. Rose Parkway down in Henderson. And it's a tiny plot of land, so I don't know quite what they're going to do. We don't have a lot of information about it, but uh, it's good news, I guess, in the development of that area. That same area now has tons of brand new development, all kinds of new houses being built. The brand new Raiders practice facility is just, I don't know, two, three minutes away from there. And so there's a lot of new kind of things happening in that area. So not a huge surprise there, but I can't wait to learn more and see what kind of casino it's going to be. The M is pretty high end. It sort of uh, tries to draw in the higher end crowd. So we'll see how they try to compete within the market there. But yeah, I'm excited about that. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen any sort of new local casinos. And then last week we talked about perhaps a new station casino, Durango Station coming and this. So definitely the gaming companies are sort of maneuvering, thinking that there is some future here in Las Vegas, despite everything that's going on. Yeah, it is interesting that they're going back to where they, you know, found success the first time. And maybe it's to stick it in, uh, you know, uh, stick it to the people they sold it to a little bit, too. I don't know. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if there was any animosity after that sale or maybe they don't like the way things are run now. But or maybe they just know the area and they want to take advantage of it and think there's, you know, more opportunity there. But it is interesting that they're building it like right across the street from where they built their uh, initial casino. Yeah, and they haven't owned the, the the M for a long time. There was it was basically built in the middle of the recession, so or it was finished then. So there was a lot of financial issues, and it eventually I think went into bankruptcy and stuff like that. But certainly they are heavily involved with the M and have been uh, even through Penn National open owning it. So they definitely know the market there. So good news there. Now moving on. We learned this week that the Venetian announced that their Palazzo Tower will be closing permanently, or not permanently, closing all week long, all the way through December 23rd. So for a few weeks, it's going to be closed, not even open on the weekends. And that probably speaks a little bit to what we were talking about last week with hotel occupancy being low, even on the weekends. As I said, like rates are really low. And yeah, the entire Palazzo is getting shuttered. Does that surprise you? Uh, a little a little bit, just because it's one of the more known brands, but overall not really you know what's the point of having all these towers open if they're if you're filling 20 percent in this tower and 20 percent in that tower just put them all in one tower and you know save on costs and and everything in that line but it's sad because you don't expect it but on the other hand with a pandemic and with the way things are playing out right now it is expected so it's it's just, uh, it always when we talk about the palazzo venetian always gives me a chance to get nerdy and if you're reading stories and it says the Palazzo Tower at Venetian is closing. Most people know the Venetian and Palazzo as two separate casinos. Two se they think they're two separate properties, but really they operate under one occupancy or one gaming license and everything. So the Palazzo is just a tower at the Venetian Resort and the Venetian is a tower at the Venetian Resort. So 
basically it's just akin to them shutting down a tower, even though a lot of people sort of think of the Palazzo as its own entity. Now it does have its own casino and that's going to be remaining open partially during this closure and some of the restaurants on that side will remain open. So it's just basically the hotel tower closing down. If you ever see um, the Wynn and Encore referred to, it's the Encore Tower at Wynn Resort. It's the same thing. They operate under one license. So that's a little bit of nerddom uh, if you aren't familiar with that about <laughs> Vegas. Vegas nerd. Th- there's nerds everywhere, yeah. even Vegas stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a huge Vegas nerd, as uh, you know, Mark. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I this isn't unexpected. This is slow time. Uh, it's only a few weeks that they're closing, and they're reopening December 23rd for the holidays. This makes perfect sense. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more properties actually announce full closures, um, where most of them are closing midweek, still staying open on the weekends. So uh, we'll see. But it's only going to be a couple weeks. Hopefully, when they reopen December 23rd, that's the last of the the closures. Um, Which leads me to the next thing. There's been some rumors that Las Vegas may shut down when we finish this pause. We've talked about the pause on the show before, down to 25% occupancy, no more than 50 people at shows. And there was rumors kind of coming on social media this week that when this is all over, our governor, Steve Sisolak, is going to shut down Las Vegas, just shut us down for Christmas, do a restart. I don't see that happening. I think that the 25% capacity has been fairly uh, successful, and I feel like it's cut businesses back as far as they possibly can. I just feel like these are just rumors people are starting to kind of create a little bit of drama, but I just don't see the casinos closing down right before Christmas, which as we know, is a busy time of year, or at least the busiest part of this time of year. Yeah, I don't I don't see anything like that happening as far as casinos. I could see maybe him extending um, some stuff, closing bars, uh, keeping, you know, maybe some restaurants take out only something like along those lines where it's not as restrictive, but just to shut down casinos like they did back in March. I don't I don't see that happening. I, I think it's to the point that you can't, you know, people are kind of over that type of stuff and you know they had the chance back in march to to do it right and kind of everybody failed so so i think it's just kind of beyond that at this point and um i I just don't know that they could afford it to do it again um and lose that kind of money again and all the workers and everything like that i just i don't see how it could happen yeah i think it's a non-starter personally obviously it could happen and i'm not speaking to the to the numbers of what should but we we know that you have to balance the economic impact and we know that vegas has been so hugely impacted by this i just don't see it happening i just really think these are just social media rumors and obviously there's no official news to that sisolak hasn't said anything about that and i just highly doubt that we're going to come out of this pause where we cut everything back to 25 percent and then completely shut down our main industry again i think it's been widely kind of considered that that was a mistake that maybe there was other options available and it hurt a lot. So I will see. I mean, we'll see. Uh, time will tell. But I didn't want to make that a huge topic on this week's show because I really don't believe it has a lot of truth behind it. But certainly it's a possibility. I mean, he could do that. We did shut down the casinos before. So we'll keep an eye on it. Um, but I don't know. I just don't see it happening anytime soon. But let's move on to, to brighter news. And in and out Burger is, I think, well-known in Las Vegas now, like I know that obviously it started in Southern California and it's uh, huge in California, but I think a lot of tourists kind of associate In-N-Out Burger with Vegas because they come to Vegas, they get to eat their In-N-Out Burger. We now have In-N-Out on the Strip and all over the place, Um, but they're going to build a very, very unique location across from Allegiant Stadium that's unlike any of their other locations. And I don't know, am I a nerd for being really excited about that? I, it looks really cool. (laughs) No, it does. It looks like a throwback to, you know, what you'd see in the movies, like the old school drive in type of things. You know, um, I think that's cool. I, I like that throwbacks, the retro stuff. I know, you know, Sonic has tried to do that a little bit, but not even close to the renderings that this looks looks like. And and you've said it's it's in a good area. It's got a lot of hotels around it. Uh, the stadiums down the street. It's got like an outdoor seating area. With the beautiful Vegas weather, I think it will be a hit. I think it will be popular. You know, people love in and out as it is, and I think this will be a draw for them to go there. Yeah, it's located on the southeast corner of Polaris and Russell, and there are a ton of hotels right surrounding it, and then it is directly across the street from Allegiant Stadium. It's not going to feature any indoor dining. It's just going to be two drive-through lanes, 
with uh, walk-up stands and then places to kind of sit and eat and, and parking as well. So it's going to be kind of like you mentioned with Sonic, a throwback, but also unique to in and out There is no other location that's like this. And I actually think it's a great idea. in and outs drive throughs are notoriously long lines. So the fact that they've just doubled up the drive through I think, is a great uh, choice there. And I don't know. I'm excited about this. I think this place is going to do a brisk business. It's not just for the stadium being right there, but it's a busy intersection, a busy street, and lots of tourism there as well. So uh, it's exciting. There's a very unique location on the Strip, of course, at Link. And now we have this location and uh, tons of other ones around town. So I know people love to come here and eat their burgers. Do you guys have uh, rallies or checkers in Vegas at all? So what's funny is, I don't know if any are left. A few years ago, we had a franchisee come in and open up uh, probably a dozen of them around town. And I know most of those are gone, but I'm not, I, I'm not 100% sure that every single one of them is gone. There was one right across from uh, Virgin Hotels or the old Hard Rock that opened for a while. That has now turned into a White Castle which is interesting. But yeah, they, those always had the double drive throughs right? They're famous for the double yeah. drive throughs yeah. Which I've always been kind of surprised that more people haven't tried it or, or figured it out. I guess if you have seat in dining, it's not really possible, but for anything that's smaller and is it not going to have sit down dining, you know, it's a good idea, except for when you're by yourself and you go, <laughs> you go <laughs> on the one to the left and you have to like lean way over to give them money and to get stuff. It's kind of, it's very awkward. So <laughs> I think the first That's time I ever time ate go, that go Dutch in, is when you're going down the left side. The first time I ever ate that was, uh, I think, in Jacksonville. Uh, you're, uh, yeah, just uh, pulling up, seeing this place, and I don't remember it being very good. I think that's really, I've only eaten there a couple of times, but is the food good? Do you like the food there? Uh, I like their fries. It's like a season, it's kind of like a curly fry and like a traditional fry kind of had a child because it's it's got the spices and stuff and the crunch and a little bit different texture. Um, and they kind of like melt in your mouth. So I like their fries. I mean, their burgers uh, are decent. The chicken's okay. The food's not like overwhelmingly good, but the fries are top notch. So yeah, give I mean, it a try if you see one. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, fast food. So, I mean, it's not going to be gourmet, but it's Good to see in and out coming, and I don't know, Rallies, Checkers, if, if it's in your area, check it out. Also, <laughs> speaking, speaking of food, Lotus of Siam is a very famous Thai restaurant here. It started many, many years ago in a shopping center called Commercial Center, which is on East Sahara, just east of the Sahara Hotel. And a few years ago, their main location, the whole roof collapsed in, and they moved to another location off Flamingo Road. Uh, which was in the former Roy's Hotel. It's near Flamingo in Paradise. And that location actually had an issue with a flood over the summer while it was closed due to the coronavirus closures, closures and it went under a uh, renovation. So they reopened their location now on Flamingo, their new location, while also getting their location that had been closed since 2017 open. So basically, this is the first time that Lotus Asylum has both locations open. If you're coming to Vegas, it's not cheap. Their prices have definitely caught up with their reputation as more people got to know them, but the food is very good there and it's definitely a good option. And both locations are now open. If you're up on the north end of the strip, head over to the original on Commercial Center, Center Strip Flamingo. And I just know that this is a beloved place. I've only eaten there a couple of times. Like I said, the food is really decent, but overpriced. So keep that in mind. I, that's something I think you could say about a lot of Vegas eateries. For sure. All right, and now, you always love to talk about the Silverton, Mark, and the, the mermaids that dive there and that it's a great uh, attraction because uh, I, I don't know that you, you haven't been there, right? But you've, you've seen No, I've never been there. It's not, I like always want to go there, and then but most of my Vegas trips are so short that I never get to really venture out as much as I would like. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen your videos and you've written up stuff about it in the past on the website, Miles to Memories. So it looks awesome. And then to see uh, Scuba Santa, that would be cool. Not this year, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, so they had Scuba Santa last year. And he would. there was a couple days where Santa would get in this big tank that they have and dive, scuba dive down and, and see the kids through the glass. And that was really cool. Unfortunately, not this year. But Scuba Santa has been replaced by Plexiglass Santa at the Bass Pro Shops <laughs> next door. <laughs> And we're only laughing, not because of Santa or anything, but there's a video of this, of uh, Santa Claus, and he has his big barrier around him. He's basically in a bubble as the kids come up to him. 
And I guess it's just a stark reminder of 2020 and what we have to go through these days. Hopefully it doesn't uh, tell the kids that come up to the plexiglass, no, no Nerf guns. Yes. And make them cry. <laughs> yes, there's this viral video where this Santa, this little boy, said he wanted a Nerf gun and Santa told him no guns. And then he cried and it was just a sad thing uh, to see. Uh, but yeah, hopefully Santa at Bass Pro Shops is a little friendlier than, than that Santa. But I never saw the scuba Santa, but now that I've heard of it, I have to make sure. Hopefully they bring it back next year and uh, we can bring it to you. And I do plan on the channel bringing a lot of stuff in the next couple weeks about all the holiday stuff. So I'm going to try to get around the entire city and film all of the special holiday stuff, both on the strip and the local stuff for you guys and maybe split it up over a couple videos so you can see all of the holiday celebrations here. But unfortunately, Scuba Santa will not be among them. And then finally, our final story, Mark, we talked about Virgin Hotels last week about potentially booking it. I was booked there on opening night just to see how it all shook out. They still haven't contacted me, but they have officially announced that they're not going to open January 15th. I was by the building the, uh, just the other day and they have finally taken down the Hard Rock signage and put up Virgin Hotel signage. And here's the statement that they said, because they basically alluded to the fact that they're almost done with construction. It says, due to the continuously evolving COVID-19 situation, not only in Nevada, but nationwide, we've made the decision to delay the January 15th opening of Virgin Hotels Las Vegas. The construction for the project is on time, and this decision was predicated on the current conditions in the market as it pertains to the pandemic. So it's not really anything that's a surprise. It's going to be slow. They're done, but they're going to wait to open until they feel like they can get enough business. Makes sense. I think it's a it's a good idea. I mean, if you're starting out a new, you rebuilt this whole thing and built it up, everybody kind of wants it to open just because out of the excitement for it and everything. And I think it's smart on their part not to fall into that trap and, and to play it out to what makes sense uh, financially and business-wise you don't want to open up to kind of like a dud. So the carrying costs definitely are going to play a part in it, but I'd rather wait a month or two and, and see how things pick, if things pick up and then open it up to a, a big party atmosphere type of thing. So it doesn't surprise me, but I think it's a good decision. Yeah. Opening a hotel in Vegas in January is strange anyway. It's also strange that we would have had, like we know Circa's opening end of this month. So we would have had two openings right within a couple of weeks in a very slow time. So yeah, I think it makes sense to push it back to the spring. And I'm sure that now that they know they're doing that with whatever construction they're doing, they're able to spread that out maybe. So not having to pay as much overtime. There's always a tons of things that have to be finished kind of right at the end of a construction project. So this gives them a little bit of time to do that. I don't think that there's any risk of this project opening. It will open. Like I said, it's pretty much done or it will be pretty much done by the end of this month is what they say. And they finally got the signage up on the building. So I'll have a update on that as well uh, coming soon on the channel. I would, but I would think they'd have to open before March Madness. Like, yeah, that's that's kind of like a key couple weeks that you'd want to be involved in. So my, that would be my guess. End of February, early March, something like that. Yeah, I think give them a little bit of time to get open before the spring break crowds and stuff. So my guess would be sort of end of February. I should point out they have not announced the date. So that's why we're guessing. So they just said, we're not opening January 15th, and we will let you know in the future when we are going to open. But yeah, my guess would be late in February, probably. And certainly uh, for the spring break crowds would be what they're, they're hoping for. But we'll see. I can't wait to, to get inside all the new, unique stuff happening. I was really excited to finally see the Virgin Hotel sign up on the building. Kind of made it real. They left that Hard Rock sign up forever, up until about a month ago, I think. So uh, yeah, it's good. Tons of stuff happening. Tons of holiday stuff, new casinos, Mark. I mean, it's almost like Vegas is getting ready to come back. Oh, they're getting ready. Ramping <laughs> it up. Ramping it up. All we need is 2021 to get here and Scuba Santa to return, and then life will be good. <laughs> and that's going to do it for this week. Make sure to check out our Miles and Points Travel Podcast at mtmpodcast.com. We have about 30 to 40 articles every week on our website, milestomemories.com, talking about travel rewards, Las Vegas, Disney, uh, travel in general reviews, things like that, miles to memories.com. And we have our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash miles to memories if you're interested in diving deeper into the world of miles and points, travel rewards, stuff like that. Please consider leaving a thumbs up, leaving a comment. Let us know about what you think about any of these stories down below, and we'll discuss it there. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week. See you Bye. next week. Bye.